have a little interesting video for you here. Uh, what are you smiling at? You can tell there's trouble when she's standing here smiling like that. That's just, yes. I, I am she's, innocent. She's, she's, I pull her into so many things. I've just, you know, ruined her over the years. I'm just a She's ruined arm. me too, though, so, you know. I'm just a bookworm. Uh, That's all. We're going to talk about, yeah. We're going to talk about uh, uh, this. What does the Catholic Church say about the thing of the Trinity? Going to find uh, this to be very interesting because um, I've gotten in all kinds of trouble recently, which is kind of like saying I got up and went to work today. Um, for me, you know, getting in trouble is kind of a way of life. But uh, I got in all kinds of trouble with some of the brethren because I say that Jesus Christ is God the Father, and they oh, and I'm, they've put all kinds of things on me. I'm going to show you where they're getting it from, but just to give you another verse to kind of confirm this, okay. Uh, turn in your Bible, your King James Bible, to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? We're talking about Jesus Christ in this passage, in other words. Christ is the word there. The, and the last word in verse 8. Look at verse 9. For in him, who? Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's one body. You're denying the Trinity. How am I denying the Trinity? One body composed of three, you know, uh, I don't even know what you call it. Every, every little word I say, they're going to twist it and stuff. Father, Son, Holy Spirit in one body. You say, well, that, that's modalism. It's civilianism. It's, it's heresy. I shouldn't have said that yet. That might give it away. Um, no, it's a, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. And there are plenty of scriptures to prove it. You know, again, and you, well, we can prove scriptures where Jesus is praying to God the Father and, and he says, my Father is greater than I do. Okay, then what do you do with verses like this? Is this verse an error? Where Jesus says, Philip comes to him and he says, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. us and Jesus says, Hast thou been so long time with me, and, and yet hast thou not known me? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest then thou, you know, show us the Father? Jesus is calling himself God the Father. What do you do with that? The prophecy back in the book of Isaiah, that there would be a child born. He'll be called the everlasting Father, the mighty God, you know. And I've had people writing me and stuff, oh man, you're, you're falling into heresy. You're denying the Trinity. And I'm going, how am I denying the Trinity? You see... The trinity of these people is, if you want the actual picture, let's put up a nice little picture for them here. I'm going to put this up. Uh, here you have father and son and then the little pretty little bird there, little white dove, pretty little bird, Roman Catholic picture. They're three separate, completely separate beings. Each one has its own body, soul, and spirit. Three separate beings. Three, but they're all just one. It's insanity. But uh, let me show you, uh, what does the catechism teach? All right, we're gonna, you can get into the, the adult catechism. It's not, you know, not ever as clear. Go to the page there. Uh, the, the one for children, they always just make it just right, you know, real clear. Uh, okay, um, read for, 14. Uh, down through uh, 15. Go ahead. Is there only one God? Yes, there is only one God. How many persons are there in God? In God, there are three divine persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We may compare the three persons in one God to three persons in a human family, father, mother, and child. But the big difference is that three persons in God are one God. God the Father is the first person, God the Son, Jesus himself, is the second person, and God the Spirit, and God the Holy Spirit is the third person. Three persons, but only one God. Okay. Okay. Now read verse 6, er, not verse 16. Huh. What am I talking about? <laughs> Number 16 in the catechism. I was just trying to see which ones to read. Go ahead. What do we mean by the Blessed Trinity? By the Blessed Trinity... We mean one and the same God in three divine persons. Three separate persons. Okay? Three separate bodies. 
is what they're saying. Okay, let me just show you that. Here we have, okay, there you go. And here, very important to get a hold of this little diagram here. I'm going to be showing this in just a little bit. There you have it. Try to get that thing so you can read it. So we just read. But notice that little diagram right there. Jesus is not God the Father. Okay? That's going to be important to remember. Well, this is all heresy. What you're trying to get across, this is heresy. Well, let's see about why these people are calling us heretics. Where did that come from? Go ahead and read from, well, I don't remember the book, but just go ahead and read it. Just go ahead and read it. See, this is why people hate us so bad, because we go to original source documents and we show it. And I know people are going to be, it doesn't matter if, you know, if, just because it says it in the catechism doesn't prove it's not true. <laughs> I think it's a desperate, you know. I mean, show us our beliefs in the catechism, then we'll talk, okay? You know? But, uh, no, start out with this one here. Oh, okay. You're doing it all wrong. Man, I'm going to have to hire somebody else or something. Well, that's right, I don't pay anything, so... Start right there. Early heresies about the Trinity began by denying that there are really three distinct divine persons in God. These heresies are known as mo modalism, mm -hmm. monarchy, Monarchianism, Sabellianism, and Patripassianism. Though the doctrines of each group varied, they all held that God was one in person as well as in nature, and that the different persons were merely different modes or manifestations of the same divine being. Tritheism went to just the opposite extreme. It taught that the three persons were three distinct gods. Which is funny because it's that's what Catholicism teaches. But, you know, you see it right there. They're, they're condemning modalism. Now go to the next page. They like said modalism or Sibelianism. Okay, um, number two. We also anathematize. That means, that means damn to hell. If you don't know what an anathema means. Those who follow the error of Sibelius saying that the Father is the same person as the Son. Okay, um, let me just show the two pages here real quickly. Here you go. See it there? Okay, that's where they anathematize. And then here on page 123, you can see, hopefully you can see that. The paragraph where they're talking about modalism and Sibelianism and all the other stuff. You say, what's the book there that you're holding? Oh, I don't know, just the, uh, the church teaches by uh, Jesuit fathers of St. Mary's College. Isn't it a shame when a Bible-believing Christian gets his hands on something like that? You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, you poor papists. You know, it's just much easier to just say that Brian Denlinger is an, an idiot and his wife is just brain dead, you know, and stuff like this and, and all these other things. I mean, it's funny, too, because, you know, this one guy that came out with this funny little story about us, you know, she'd get me river water in the morning and we'd go to Walmart in our dilapidated truck and spend our welfare check and I'd got cheese curls in my beard and stuff. It's called a Denlinger day. He deleted it. I was, I was, I was heartbroken. I really was. I used to... When I needed a good laugh and a good, you know, cheer me up a little bit, I'd go read it again. But he took it down. It, it hurt me. I just, give me a minute. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, <laughs> you know, but I mean, these people coming out, you know, and they're, they're just like, Dillinger thinks everybody's a Catholic. What am I supposed to do? I mean, you, you try so hard to convince us. I mean, you know. You're just like saying stuff right out of the Jesuit fathers stuff that they write, you know, quoting things out of the catechism. What am I supposed to do? You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just like, but now we're actually going to go uh, do a little Camtasia video and we're going to show you some of the people that are doing this thing of attacking me and, and, and then saying that Jesus is not God the Father, you know, and all this stuff. 
you know, and let me just let me just say this real quick too, okay? God sets things up in our King James Bible so that you cannot possibly understand him with your reasoning as a mortal, you know, man. You you just can't do it. And and these people what they're trying to do, and I think that there are some Christians that have fallen for some of the stuff from the Catholic teachings and things, and they get all worried, somebody goes, Oh, you're a modalist, and they're like, Oh, well, I'm a modalist. What oh it sounds is it contagious or something? You know, does it you know, do I do I like cough and somebody else becomes a modalist? You know, I mean and and it it just it, it gets absurd after a while. You know, these people trying to to just take God and I can explain him and stuff. You can't explain. The mystery of godliness is great. You can't explain it. You know? I mean it's just, it's crazy. The just shall live by faith. You just say, okay, I, you know, I read my King James Bible and I don't understand how Jesus can be praying to God the Father and yet he is God the Father and how does that work and this happens here and that happens. But you know what Jesus said over here? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. There's a prophecy given that, you know, someday there's going to be a child born and he's going to be the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And you go, how does this work? I don't know. Just believe it. Oh, but you look so dumb when you do that. I mean, what have been, in the eyes of the world, what are they supposed to think about you? What's the pride there with you people out there that know all about God? I'll f freely admit, I don't understand everything about God. I know what He did on the cross to pay for my sins. You know, I understand that. And I'm thankful that He saved me when I called upon His name and in my belief said, I believe you died on the cross, please save me. Praying, you know. So, you know, but we're heretics, you know, we're, we're crazy and stuff. I mean, we don't say things, you know, in the catechism, but, you know, the other people, the enemies of this ministry, they are quoting verbatim the catechism a lot of times, but we're conspiratorial because we think everybody else is Catholic or something. You know, we're crazy. Somebody else write a story, okay? I mean, I just, it really ruined my day today. I was just like, ah, oh, it took the story down. It was great. So, but anyways, all right. Um, I'm going to do the Camtasia video. You go out and get me some river water, okay? No problem. <laughs> as long All as right. the mosquitoes don't suck my blood away from me first. But see, you know, the thing of blood and drinking blood, it's all Catholic. It's good. It's good for you. we we got to get into the thing of drinking blood. Stephen Anderson's wife, you know, ate the placenta thing, you know, and stuff with the one. There's nothing wrong with it. There's, there's not just, you know, anyways. <laughs> all right. So, going to do the Camtasia video. Uh, thank you for joining me, crazy. She just walked away from me, and that's all right. We'll be right back. All right, I'm going to show you some things now. Oh, how'd you get there? I don't know. She follows me around. Um, here we are on Google Images, Catholic Trinity. Type it in. Here you see the Father is not the Son. You know, the Father is God. God is the Son. The Son is God. You know, it goes in. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Son, you know. And you have the, you know, the thing here. You got the old guy that's God the Father, and there's Jesus with his little special halo and all that stuff. And then you have the little bird, and there's God holding his Easter egg. He was a good boy, so he got to have an Easter egg this year. There it is again. <laughs> you know, I'm being sarcastic. That's an occult thing from ancient Babylon. Uh, is what it is. I forget the exact thing, but you can read Alexander Hislop's Two Babylons, you know. Although it does look like an Easter egg or like a cannonball with a cross on top, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, but you can see this thing. I mean, just type in Catholic Trinity. So here we have Andersnake with his latest little, you know, girlfriend drama thing going on. Uh, his uh, Tyler Baker, his uh, second in um, command, I guess would Anderson would be the bishop, I think, and Baker would be what the priest, I think, is how it works in Catholicism. Could be. You know, although Anderson probably thinks he's an archbishop. I don't know, but uh, listen to a little bit of this, and we'll hear him say this thing of modalism and the thing of Jesus is not God the Father. Watch. Of this heresy. Now, the biggest heresy that he's been teaching is he is basically denying the Trinity. He's saying that the Trinity is quote borderline polytheism okay he says it about uh denying the trinity all right if you believe that jesus christ 
is, you know, one body. That's not denying the Trinity, right? The three parts of the one body is Jesus is the body, God is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the spirit. There's three, okay? That's not denying the Trinity. It's craziness. But again, what's he saying? He's saying three different, you know, completely different bodies is what he's saying. So he tweaks it, just like a good Catholic. Let's continue. And he's bought into this oneness Pentecostal doctrine, or whatever you want to call it, modalism, whatever. Where they Remember modalism? That's the thing that they try to accuse you of. And i got to say this. I didn't say this in our little video here just a few minutes ago. But they'll come up with all this stuff. The Catholics, they can't, they can't say... Christians that disagree with us. No. Oh, you're a you're a Donatist. You're a Paulicean. You are a uh, Montanist. And, and I forget some of the other ones that they come up with. All these little names. You know, and, and that's what they're doing. Oh, you're a modalism. Oh, you know. Uh, it's ridiculous. They condemn you as heretics. We saw that the Jesuits, you know, Jesuit fathers talking about that. So, let's continue. They say that there is no Trinity. The Trinity is a false doctrine. And basically, they're saying that there is no distinction between the Father and the Son. They're saying that Jesus is God the Father, and there's no distinction between the two. Well, you know, I'm not even going to... Okay, let me just say this. Um, there is a distinction, but they're still part of one body. Okay? There's a distinction between your soul and your flesh. Obviously. <laughs> Let's continue. I waste too much time... Uh, explaining it in this video because I've done whole sermons on the Trinity and I'm certainly going to be doing a full sermon on the Trinity within the next week at Faith Forward Baptist Church just to make sure that everybody understands this doctrine. I've already preached on it repeatedly. Even in the last two years, I found three sermons where I hammered on this doctrine and there, there's so much evidence where the Bible uh, gives us clear distinction between the Father and the Son. You know, one great... Okay. And he'll go to the verses where, you know, distinction between God the Father and the Son. There's a distinction between your soul and your flesh. Does that mean that you have, that they're two separate bodies somehow? I mean, there's, there's a secretly someplace right now. There's two more of her walking around someplace and two more of me. We go through a lot of food here. I mean, that's six. And then Oliver, that's another three bodies that we have to take care of. <laughs> I mean, we're made in the image and likeness of God, aren't we? Sure. Body, soul, spirit. You know, but then you get uh, over here, this guy, uh, Jay Downer, he, you know, thought I was great, just like so many other people. And then I said a few things he didn't like, and he's stabbing me in the back and everything else. Here's his video, Jesus Christ is not God the Father. This video is in response to Brian Denlinger's video entitled, Why I Believe That Jesus Is God the Father. He uses John 14, 9 through 11 to support his heretical view. John 14 will be looked at very closely, and by comparing Scripture with Scripture, we will clearly see that Jesus Christ is not God the Father. He is God the Son. God the Son. Show me that wording in Scripture in the King James Bible. Never appears. Jesus Christ is God the Son. So you have two different gods. It's funny because the New American Standard Version in John chapter 1, they talk about Jesus instead of the only begotten Son. They call him the only begotten God. So there's two gods, according to the New American Standard Version, and these people, these Catholics, you know, closet Catholics, they teach three gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. No scripture at all to back that up. Not one verse of scripture that says that. We're the heretics, though. Because we stick to that King James Bible. We're pretty bad, aren't we? Oh, yeah. But over here in the side thing, you see, uh, uh, here you have... Ed Funninger, Fakinger, whatever you want to call him, Brian Hillinger denies that Jesus Christ is God the Son. Yes, because the Bible doesn't teach that. And then you have Andrew Snake's uh, latest little sermon here, new, brand new. And uh, then, of course, up there you have Pope Francis homily, Jesus is not God. Hmm. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. You could say that. I don't want to because I don't want to make you know problems or anything else. You know, I'll do it this way here. You can, you can see the three here because our picture is up there in the upper right-hand corner. But there you can see the three. Ed Fenninger, Andrew Snake, and the Pope. Hmm. But here's another one that I find to be very interesting. Okay? I want you to remember something. 
the Catholic teaching, you saw it in the Baltimore Catechism earlier, and here it is again. Type it in, Catholic Trinity. Very simple. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They put it this exact way right here. All right? Remember that. I'll show you the danger of this guy right here. Robert, breaker, breaker, faker, faker. Here we go. Watch this. Yeah, do that. So it's one football, but it has three parts. Well, that's what God is. He's one God, but with three parts. <clears throat> one of the best ways to explain the Trinity I've ever seen is like this. And I don't know where I learned this, probably in Bible school. <laughs> I don't know where I learned this, probably in Bible school. Um, I know where you learned it, Breaker. Right there. Let's continue. Watch, he's going to draw it exactly the same as the Catholic Catechism. Watch. But uh, notice how I have one circle, but I have divided the circle into three parts. We have God the Father. We have God the Son. And we have God the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. God the Son is not the Holy Spirit. You see that line there blocking it? God the Son is not God the Father. See that line there? God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. They're, they're three distinct separate parts, but they're all one God. Just as this... Doesn't know where he got it from. No idea where he got it from. Isn't that something? Very. Hmm. Very. Isn't that interesting? You know? I mean, he's not the Father. He's not, the, you know kind of weird why he would draw that the same as the catechism mm -hmm. and it's funny because he uses uh, Ruckman's illustration over here Ruckman talks about the football thing he uses this illustration so he takes what Ruckman teaches and then he blends it in this seven mysteries thing is, is Ruckman wrote a book on it for crying out loud and this guy plagiarizes everything Ruckman does and again I didn't say this in my other video on Breaker but you know the sad thing is Bible Baptist bookstore in an attempt to protect Ruckman's materials they copyright everything. You put a couple videos up, they'll come after you. They'll try to shut your channel down, whatever else. I mean, times have changed there, Bible Baptist Bookstore. Just drop all the copyright stuff. Get the videos out there so people can get saved. But what's happened is, in that vacuum that's been created, because the average person doesn't have access to Ruckman's. I mean, you'd have to spend thousands of dollars to get everything Ruckman has. I know, I have. You know, the average person can't do that. So in that vacuum of that really, really good teaching and preaching being available, some faker like this can come along, steal Ruckman's material, bring it out as his own, not ever give Ruckman credit and say, yeah, I got this from Ruckman or whatever else. Actually condemn Ruckman, says that Ruckman doesn't preach the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, the guy's he's such a stinking little weasel, liar. If you ask Jesus to save you, you're going to go to hell, according to this devil, you know. And, and see what he does is then he can come out, steal Ruckman's material, bring it out as his own, and then sew in his little leaven here and there to okay. mess people up. And he's just going to get worse with time. Guarantee it. A little you know? leaven and, leaven up the whole lump. Yeah. So, and, you know, but the first time I saw him, I was starting to play him. What did you think? Well, the first time uh, we watched one of his videos in 2015, the Lord gave me a really odd feeling about this guy. And within the first minute, the Lord put it in my, in my mind, this guy is a fake. And I thought to myself, there's something really, really wrong with this guy. Mm -hmm. In the first minute, and I said to, to Brian, I don't want to watch any more of this. I, I don't feel very good about it. And uh, <clears throat> he wanted to watch the whole thing, so I said, okay, I'll watch the whole thing with you. And the whole time, I just... Yeah, I it was it was this thing on the September twenty third, two thousand fifteen, possible rapture date and whatever else, and I was like, well, you know, I give people a chance, you know. Most people don't think that, but I do, and she just kept like, oh, I don't like the guy. I don't know what it is. I, uh, you know, I think I've I've seen that with a lot of women. You know, you know, saved women, a lot of times will have uh, some greater levels of discernment even than men sometimes. And, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, okay, the guy's, you know, whatever. I'm just going to try to give the guy a break and stuff. She never fell for it. And I've seen a lot of other women and, and even brethren as well, you know, brothers and sisters and stuff is what I'm saying, 
that have been like, yeah, I started watching him. It's like, yeah, something just about the guy. I don't know what it is. Something, yeah, yeah, because he's a hireling, you know. And again, people have been showing me stuff. Yeah, he has. He's definitely monetized. And they go, oh, you you accept donations? Yeah, from saved people. The body of Christ keeps this ministry going, right? And if it doesn't, if at some point in time it doesn't, you know, continue and whatever else, I'm going to go back to my secular job. You know, I have other plenty of other ways I can make money. You know, I want to stay in ministry. I want to stay active, bringing vid as many videos out as I can. I mean, when we finally get to a, a place where we can move and things, and you know, if you're familiar with the ministry, you know what's going on. Um, we're going to be bringing out a lot more videos and much higher quality videos. You know, right now things are kind of up in the air. But the whole point is, for me to take money from something like Google and and monetize my account. I, I fear God too much to do that. There's just no way. Why would I do that? Why would I take money from the lost world knowing that they're putting secular, horrible ads? I mean, I try to fight the ads from being put on my videos. I've I've gone and and you know, uh, you know, uh, I forget what they call that. Not appealed, but uh, they'll you know they go in and they take you know because my salvation message has you know professional music in it that I paid for that I have the license to from royaltyfreemusic.com and they're constantly flagging it all oh, you're using this copyrighted music and I'm going back in saying yes because I own the license to it I paid for it you know get your stupid copyright violation claims off my video and don't put your ads on and they come back in okay well you know and it's fine for a while month or two later, they're coming in, they're putting ads back on, and I'm going, get your stinking ads off my video, you know, I mean, they're putting them on, and I, and they don't, first of all, they don't pay me anything when they, you know, are putting their ads on my videos, secondly, I wouldn't take their money if, even if they did, you know, I don't take money from lost people, so, you know, he's a fraud, and it just, it, it, it's just so incredible to me that people who call themselves Christians are so just spiritually just I mean most of them are just false I mean I understand that but there's other people that are it's like you should know better than this and they're going well, I don't see anything wrong with breaker you know the guy tells people that if you ask Jesus to save you you're going to go to hell <laughs> I mean I, I'm just I'm I'm stunned it's you know it's gotten this bad you know, Richling came out years and years ago. We first moved here to Maine, and I debunked his whole thing that prayer is a work. I mean, it was, he came out right when we were moving. Ironic, how, how ironic that is. Right when we were moving from Pennsylvania to Maine, he came out and he's, he was challenging, challenging everybody. Prove that prayer is not a work. Prayer is a work, and prayer will send you to hell, and the Romans road to damnation and all this stuff. And I'm like, I just want to, you know, I'd like to really nail this guy, but I can't because I'm right in the process of moving, you know. And here we go again. We're getting ready to move again. And this guy comes out. Breaker comes out. So, you know, and Ed Fenninger, uh, you know, he was another one that, that when Richling was coming out with all his stuff, Eric John Phelps came out and told me the one time, he said, yeah, Richling's a Jesuit. He said, you know, I've worked with him in the past. He said, yeah, he did the whole Jesuit thing of ingratiating himself to me, coming in buddy, buddy, an old friend, friend. And then he turned around and, and you know, Stabbed them in the back, basically. Uh, nice Jesuit tactics that they use. And he said, yeah, Richling is definitely a Jesuit. Went to a Jesuit high school, talked about wanting to be a Jesuit when he grows up. You know, the whole thing. And uh, right in that time period, Ed Fenninger came out in support of Martin Richling. And everybody was like, what? You know, Ed Fenninger, we thought he was a good guy. And Ed, you know, kind of backed down, waited a few years. And now he's coming out saying the things that Martin Richling once brought out. You know. Because people are forgetting now. You know, I mean, I understand, you know, we have almost 1,200 videos or something now. I understand you can't watch them all in an afternoon. You know, this is years of work that we've put in. But you got to understand, somebody comes out and they tell you to deny the clear teachings of Scripture. You know, and they're coming up with all kinds of weird arguments. If you're saved, you're going to feel like eh, something doesn't sound right here. You're going to have that Holy Spirit of discernment. You know, and that's why a lot of you have written this thing about Robert Breaker. And you'll get these people, well, I'm a Christian and, you know, you know, I, I love both of you. You can't. <laughs> I hate that too. You can't, you know, I respect both you and Breaker, Brother Brian. How can you? We teach two totally different things. You say, well, some things you line up. Yeah, because he stole stuff from Ruckman. 
And I find it interesting too. Oh, I don't steal things from people. It's all my original work and things, you know? And so what's he do? He comes out after I rebuke him and stuff and says, I don't, I'm not going to recommend the guy. And so what's he do? He copies my, my whole style of preaching in front of my bookshelf there, which I've done for years and years and years and years and years. You know, I use my, my, my bookshelf as my, my backdrop because a lot of times I'm turning around and grabbing books off of it to show quotes and things. I've done that, you know. But he doesn't copy people. He doesn't steal people's work. No. You know, no. He's innocent. Sure. I'm the one who's at fault, you know. I'm the bad guy. I need to go to God and repent of my something or other, you know. I don't know what it is, you know. And, and uh, you know, i got to just say this, too, because some of you don't, you know, haven't seen the comments, but he, like, wrote a comment, and he's like, you should have called me. And I said, well, you know, why should I call? Why can't I just believe, you know? So, <laughs> so but, you know, brethren, don't be fooled by this stuff, this, this thing of, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is not God and all this other stuff, you know. It, Jesus Christ, I mean, just believe the Bible, what the Bible says, all right? But again, we've showed something here. We've showed the original sources. We've taken you. We've shown you the books. We showed a catechism from the Catholic Church, a book written by Jesuit fathers. We're showing you right here, showing you to we'll end on this page, this Catholic teaching that there are three separate bodies. The old man, the Christ guy, and the little birdie, the white dove. Quick question. You know, Isn't what's the question? Isn't this from this whole diagram right here right here that uh faker was was drying out essentially isn't this from the kabbalah and occultism well it's it's a variation of the tree know, of life isn't yeah it? it's kind of like at the bottom of the tree of life and things i mean you can get into the kabbalistic magic and stuff with this whole thing too we're not even going to go there i mean that's that's a whole another that's a whole other thing we're not going to get into that i mean we've already lost a lot of these people anyway so <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in trying to take it any further, but it, it, you know, I mean, I'm just I'm going to offer this, you know, to those of you out there that just hate our guts and say that you know you used to say good things and now you've gone off the deep end. <laughs> That's another favorite one of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, okay, um, for all you you know false professing Christians out there, I'm not talking about people that are just confused on this whole issue and are studying it. You're fine. I'm talking about the ones that will no more be admonished. Please do us a favor, okay? Please pray. Of course, some of them don't pray. They just believe. Right. Or, or do whatever you have to do and just say, God, could you please remove these heretics out of here? You know, we really want to have our Catholic empire where we can have Catholic Baptists and Catholic Presbyterians and Catholic King James Bible-believing Catholics and Catholic Jesuits and, you know, just, I mean, we just want to blend the whole thing together in a spirit of love and tolerance and just... Unity. Uh, unity and and unity and and more unity. And, you know, just please get these heretics out of here. I mean, just, just rapture them away, you know. Could you please do that? Because, you know, those of us that are genuinely saved, we're sick and tired of being around you Catholics. And you, you just, what's with the infiltration thing? I mean, if you're really truly saved, if you're, if you're, excuse me, if you're, Catholics aren't saved. Right. If you're, if you're legitimate or whatever else, what are you doing infiltrating? What's with the little secret societies and little, little things? You know, uh, you know, if if you're gonna come out and claim that we're Catholics, show the sources, show where the Catechism is teaching what we teach. We're doing it about people like you. So, guess that's it. Make sure to leave your dislikes down below and um, unsubscribe because uh, we don't get any money for anything anyhow. So, you know, it's, it saves me time. You know, I want to be efficient. So, you know, please unsubscribe from this channel since you've gotten offended. Don't watch us anymore. Don't post comments. Don't waste our time and we won't waste yours. See? See? Isn't that nice? I mean, you know, we're smiling. See? We're happy. <laughs> oh, boy. And we love reading your blog entries. 
with all sorts of uh, funnies, you know, interspersed with what you say about us. Uh huh. Yeah. So. <laughs> you should. She should have had her. You should have had your nun outfit on that one. Oh. Next time, we'll do it again sometime. But uh, <laughs> that's gonna be it, brethren. I hope those of you that are saved and understand, you know, uh, what we're trying to do with this ministry, you know, get a good laugh once in a while. Um, is you know I just need to say that too. Uh, something I want to say real quick here, just to kind of get this out there. Um, you know, I just want people that are lost to understand something. Uh, we're really hard on sin, and we really are sarcastic sometimes. But anytime anybody, I don't care what you've done, you want to come to us for help, we are going to help you, and we're not going to look down on you and whatever else. I mean, we get people that have been involved in the occult. We get people that have been involved in sodomy. We get people that have been involved in all kinds of evil. And we are never going to, to condemn you and say you're this and you're that and stuff and hate your guts simply because of what you were involved in before you got saved. Never going to happen. Um, you know, our sarcasm is reserved for those people who will no more be admonished, as I said earlier. Those people that are just so filled with hatred and just... They want us dead, kind of a thing. Um, that's who we're sarcastic about. So I just wanted to say that because I don't say that enough. You know, that uh, our sar sarcasm is not just for everybody. Just we hate everybody but ourselves or something like this. I mean, please. So, and if you're a Christian and you're going through some of this stuff and you're just getting beaten from pillar to post and, and things, there's going to be times it's going to hurt. There's going to be times that you're going to feel down as a result of it. But, uh, Brethren, when you know you're right, and you know what the Bible teaches, and that's why you know you're right, because it's like it's what the Bible says. It's right there. Take joy. Be happy. You know? And uh, laugh about it. It is it is funny. You know? You say, well, brother, they're, they're going to hell. That's their decision. That's their decision. Um, no innocent person is ever going to go to hell. Keep that in mind. The God that we serve, you know, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, He knows everything that's going on in these people's minds. He's never going to send one innocent person to hell. It's never going to happen. So, it's sad to see people deceived, but you know what? They're there because they want to be. Okay? I heard an old statement the one time that said, you can't con a man unless he's crooked. Think about that one, okay? So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.